I just ordered a brand new Jeep Gladiator. So I figured, well, while all the information is still fresh on my head, why don't we talk about trims and specs in this week's video and I'll show you and tell you exactly what I ordered and all of the features that I added and why and hopefully answer some questions when going to buy a new Gladiator. Now this isn't the first Jeep that I've ordered brand new. I have a 2020 EcoDiesel Jeep Wrangler and so I am familiar with a lot of the little variations when it comes to ordering a new Jeep. And there's also some options that I kind of wanted but there are huge delays from Jeep right now because of part shortages. So I left a few things out. We're gonna go hop on jeep.ca. We're gonna go to their build and price configurator and I'm gonna build exactly the Jeep that I ordered. And the first one that we're gonna start with is trim level. There's the Willys, there's the Overland, there's the Rubicon and there's the Mojave and there's also the high altitude but I, and the Sport but I think they kind of fall outside of the idea behind this video. So I'm gonna kind of exclude those. But first we need to start and talk about which trim level did I order. If we head on over to jeep.ca and this is also available on jeep.com, they have this great shopping tool if you're not familiar with it already called Build and Price. This lets you pick your Jeep out and we're gonna scroll down past the Wranglers to the Gladiators, but this lets you pick your Jeep out and you can look at all of the different options that are available, the colors, the different trim levels. So if we go into the Gladiator here, I use this tool all the time, especially when they start releasing new features or specs that you can add to your Jeep. I like to go in and see uh, how much they cost, are they available, and try to get a better feel for some of the options. So the Willys seems to be a hot topic on the forums. Um, I see a lot of these builds going out through White Rock Dodge and I see a lot of them being built over at Epic. But the thing with the Willys is you've got no lockers on it, a uh, slightly higher spec sport, but we're really gonna be looking at the Overland, the Rubicon, and the Mojave. So I will tell you right now, I ordered a Rubicon and I was really having a hard time between the Rubicon and the Mojave. And so the big difference for me with the Overland was just how you could kind of configure some of the interior options as well as it doesn't have the four to one transfer case in it. So if you watched last week's video, you know that we are putting a V8, we're swapping the motor out of our Gladiator and we're gonna put a V8 through, uh, we're gonna put a V8 into it. And so one of the few things that we are gonna be keeping in it is the transfer case. So with the Rubicon, we get the four to one transfer case. It gives you a really, really low crawl ratio. So the other thing that I just couldn't get away from on the Rubicon, is the electronic sway bar disconnect. So neither the Overland nor the Mojave have electronic sway bar disconnects. And I find this a really useful tool when I'm off-roading, um, depending on whether I need to have articulation on demand with my front axle, or if I need to lock up that sway bar and we're on a high uh, camber um, slope and I don't want my axle disconnecting and letting the body roll away. So I want it kept tight. But there are a couple other variances when we get into the interior of how you can spec out a Rubicon versus a, Moha versus a Mojave. There's two big things that I really want it from the Mojave, which I don't have in the Rubicon, which I think would have been really nice for this build, but I don't think it was worth trading off. The first, uh, well, the Mojave has that cool hood. Now this is not the same as the 392 hood. This is almost the same, Let's see if we can bring a picture up here of it. So the Mojave has this cowl hood on it. And I think this is a really great style uh, component. And then in the 392, they made it functional with its hydro flow system where it can actually take on water. Now I thought about, well, can we get a 392 hood and put it on my new Gladiator? The answer is no, because of how big the motor is in there. We don't have room for that hydro system, but you can find these Mojave hoods and paint to match your vehicle. So while we still ordered a Rubicon, we're gonna be adding the Mojave hood to our Rubicon to give it that extra bit of style, that 392 V8 looking style that they have on the Wrangler. And it's just gonna cost us a little bit extra. Now the other big thing with the Mojave, which was definitely a big consideration, is the strengthened frame. So the Mojave is built to be like their desert runner. They call it desert rated instead of trail rated like the other Jeeps. 
And so it has a strengthened frame. Now it also has some uh, different suspension components in it. It has different uh, bump stops. Um, it has upgraded Fox shocks, but we're gonna be ripping all the suspension out of our Jeep anyways. So at the end of the day, that didn't really matter, but there's a couple key interior differences between the Mojave and the Rubicon that I'll touch on in a minute that kind of led me towards the Rubicon configuration. And then we've got the Overland Edition. So I didn't really consider the Overland Edition because of the transfer case and not having the electronic sway bar disconnect. So really the Overland Edition just was a non-starter for me. It was really between the Rubicon and the Mojave. We don't have a four to one transfer case in the Mojave because the Mojave has the 273 to one transfer case. It's for desert running, higher speed transfer case. So when you're in four low, you've still got sort of a higher speed. You don't have that really, really low four to one transfer case, which is more for higher torque, rock crawling, obstacle situations rather than desert, higher speed bombing situations. But the Mojave uh, doesn't have a front locker. It does have a rear locker that you can activate, but it doesn't have a front locker. Now you can add aftermarket lockers to that if you want. Um, and then it doesn't have the sway bar disconnect that's, that's automatic in the Rubicon, which I think is one of the most distinguishing features. And the Overland Edition does not have lockers at all. It uh, has a, uh, they call it true lock rear end, where it'll lock when it sees wheel slippage on one side, but you can't force it to lock. And so you kind of got to get some wheel spin going before it will start to lock up. And it doesn't have a front locker at all. And if you're wondering why you want lockers, well, lockers will lock axles so that both wheels are always turning. And if you have an open differential, and you lose traction on one side with one of the wheels, all the power will go to that wheel and you won't get any power to the wheel that has the traction. So that's why you lock your wheels and you lock your axle so that both wheels are always turning. So if one wheel's slipping, you've still got the other wheel turning and you can get traction. It's super important when off-roading, especially in the snow and the mud and you know slippery rocks where you're constantly losing traction on one of your tires. Lockers make all the difference. So for me, um, front and rear lockers are absolutely essential. There was a couple other things that I, the Mojave has, and I'll show you here, has some really nice interior seats. Um, so this was definitely something that was hard to get away from. And I really want the Mojave seats in my Jeep. So they have, let's see if we can bring this up, but they have these high bolstered seats uh, that are really good for desert bombing, not higher speed, bumpier trails. And these seats are really nice. We've reviewed the Mojave that uh, Christian over at Epic Adventure Outfitters had, and the seats are super nice. But what led me away from this is all of this orange. I didn't want any orange on my interior. Um, I ordered a red Jeep, and I'll show you in a second. It's, it's all red. I really just didn't want the orange stitching all over the steering wheel, the shifter, um, and around the dash. And as well, well, you can paint these rings, but now we gotta be painting rings and everything else. So the orange in the interior uh, really kind of turned me off from the Mojave as well. And the other part with the interior, I, uh, I didn't want, I don't want black leather. Uh, black leather gets really hot. In my 2020 EcoDiesel, we have cloth. And I actually am quite happy with the cloth, although it is wearing a little bit on the bolsters. Um, I was hoping to try to avoid that by going with cloth over leather because the leather bolsters on these seats really do crinkle and wear because you have to jump up and into them a lot. So you're kind of crushing the bolsters. The Mojave comes with black as an option and then it comes with this steel gray, which no offense to anybody that likes this or has this, but I think the steel gray is really not a good look and I didn't want this at all. And with the Rubicon, we ordered this with the dark saddle. Now, this picture doesn't do this uh, really good justice. This looks a lot better in person. I actually saw a red Jeep, a uh, red new Wrangler with the saddle interior when I was down at Jeep Jamboree in Idaho. And the red with the, the dark saddle interior looks awesome. It is such a good color combination. And so I went with this dark, uh, dark saddle and it does look a lot darker in person and it looks really good, especially with the red. But the big thing here is even if you don't like the dark saddle, you look at how the interior changes with black 
to saddle. So with black, you know, a lot of people complain about this red dash. And so with black, you get red dash, red stitching, etc., etc. Probably doesn't look so bad with certain colors, um, but with other vehicle colors, I think it doesn't look very well. Look very, look very well. Doesn't look very good, especially when you open the doors, because <clears throat> you see the door here is all trimmed out to the. Let's see if we can change this color. Now you can see. So the doors on the inside are the color of the exterior around the door frames. You see that? And so it looks fine with red, but if you start changing this to other colors, like especially green, uh, so this is Sarge green, you get a green interior with a red trim. I don't know, guys, this is not for me. And I really wish Jeep would allow you to uh, do a bit more with the dash color and stitching options if you like the black leather. But if we switch this up to the dark saddle, the dash goes to a silver insert. We get silver uh, stitching on all the leather and then we get the saddle interior. And so I think this looks a lot better with any color you have, but also red with tan just is a very traditional good look. Now the other thing is, if you select this dark saddle interior, you can go out and purchase a set of cat skin leather seat covers and have these replaced. They'll probably cost you with installation maybe around $2,000 or so. Um, but you know, we're talking about building an $80,000 plus truck here. So that's not terrible in the grand scheme of things. If you really don't like the saddle interior after you get it and you want to get rid of the stitching and mute this a little bit. So that is where we're at with our Gladiator. We ordered Firecracker Red with saddle interior and that way we get the nice silver. So there are a ton of options available for your Gladiator when you order it. Uh, the trailer tow package I would recommend for most people. Now the alternator and the cooling isn't really going to matter with ours because we are swapping out the engine which means the alternator is going to get changed and all of the cooling is going to be changed as part of that. But I did order this and we will have the class 4 hitch. Here is an option that I did not order. This is the advanced safety group. The advanced safety group has the uh, brake assist. So that's like the radar system. If you're out with cruise control and you get too close to a vehicle, it'll start to slow you down. And so we didn't order this. Two reasons. The re uh, first one is these are in short supply with the chip shortages. So this would have added a lot of additional order time to my new Jeep. It's also 1400 bucks. I think this would have been nice for a lot of the long drives uh, where I'm on the freeway and the highway and you know there's a lot of alternating traffic. This would have been nice. But the other big thing is if you add this, it puts a big box in the interior. So let's go to our interior shot. Hopefully this shows it now. Look at this big box that it puts above your rear view mirror. And for me, this is a really great spot to put a camera. This is where my dash cam sits. To me, it's kind of blocking a lot of uh, part, you know, part of the window. So uh, I really just don't like how Jeep has done this, but I can understand why they did it, especially with all the problems people with Ford Broncos are having, having to relocate the sensors that are on the bumper in order to uh, add a winch or aftermarket bumpers. There's no sensors in the bumpers of the Jeeps. So it's all up here in the uh, um, box that goes above the window, but I don't know guys, this is really ugly and it just blocks part of the window. And this is a great spot to put a GoPro and a dash cam and it's sort of tucked behind your rear view mirror and you don't really see it when you're driving. Cold weather group, absolutely. We live in Canada, we go out snow wheeling all the time. I love having a heated steering wheel in my current Wrangler. Um, the heated seats are really nice as well, but when my hands are wet and cold and we've been, you know, packing up gear or doing a recovery or something, man, getting back in the Jeep and grabbing a nice warm steering wheel is awesome. Um, so that's an essential. Now this one here, auxiliary switch group. This is, in my opinion, an essential as well. So this also adds the 240 amp alternator. Uh, so if you don't get the trailer tow package, you can add this, get the big alternator. I have this in my Wrangler. The 700 amp maintenance free battery lasted me about a year and a half um, of off-roading and vibrations and bouncing and then I had to replace it. But the big one here is the four auxiliary switches. So 
this is really nice to have. And if you're not sure what this option is, this is the option right down here at the bottom in front of your shifter. You get four switches. I can't remember the amperages. They're, they're two or a higher amp. I think they're 30 amp and the two are lower amp. I think they're 15, but you get four switches that are pre-wired into the vehicle. You can hook up off-road lights or radio or whatever accessory you may need to power. What's really great is that you can change how these switches work. You can set them to automatically retain their state from the last time you used your Jeep. So when you turn it on and off, if you left it on, it'll come back on, which is really handy for my radio. And you can toggle it to be momentary press, or you can have it to be toggle locked on or off. So these are great. You can configure them through Uconnect on the dash. The other really cool part that a lot of people don't know, and I'm super surprised how many people don't know this, is you get the four auxiliary wires under your hood to wire up the lights, but you get the same four auxiliary wires underneath your dash. So right under here, underneath your dash panel, there are the same four wires are there. So if you wanted to wire something up into your interior, you've already got the access to those powers you don't have powers you've already got the access to that power inside your your jeep you don't have to bring it in from underneath the hood to power something inside but the part that most people don't know and i didn't even know this when i ordered my jeep is that you actually get two more wires on the interior one uh, these are lower amp wires but one is uh always on and the other one is automatically toggled with your vehicle's ignition so if you want to run like a dash cam which why wouldn't you want to run a dash cam in today's age? Uh, they can save you from so many problems in an accident, or I use mine all the time to capture something that I missed while off-roading. You can wire it up. Most dash cams need both a switched power and an always on power. You can just connect them right up to these two wires right there under your dash. The next option here is the safety group. I did not order this. If you check it, it seems to actually change to add LED tail lamps. You can add the LEDs in another uh, option down below, but I'll talk about that in a minute because there's something I want to talk about specific to the Gladiator and LEDs. But no, I did not order this. I don't want the park sensors in the rear bumper as well as the blind spot monitoring. The thing with that is it monitors off of the rear taillights and shooting a radar up the side of the vehicle. And if you've, you know, damaged your taillight or modified it, well, it gets, just gets more expensive. So I did not order that. Okay. So next, is the cargo management group cargo management with trail rail system uh say that 10 times fast now they keep including this alternator and all these features it's like they're selling you five alternators when you configure this i don't know but lockable under seat storage is great the extra uh power outlet in the bed of your truck is awesome you get a i believe it's 400 watt uh, inverter and you get a plug in the truck bed so this is really great for plugging in anything you want. Um, but the trail rail system is very useful. I've seen a lot of racks and canopies starting to mount to this as a more secure way to attach to the box rather than those C clamps that clamp onto the edge of your box and hold down whatever it is you have. Um, so I think for me, this is just, this is a must have. I don't know what accessories we're gonna add to the Gladiator yet, but I have a feeling we're gonna need to use the trail rail system at some point. And I wanna have the power in the bed and can't argue with some additional lockable storage under the rear seat. The next one is the LED lighting group. We ordered this, this is an expensive one, it's 1400 bucks, but the LED headlights on the new JLs and JTs are great. I wouldn't even consider the halogen ones. I'm sure you can swap these out to aftermarket, but a lot of headlights alone that I've seen are in the thousand dollar plus price range. This is all Canadian too, by the way. And that's an essential. The LED fog lights are really nice. I'm gonna probably swap something out to an amber or yellow uh, fog light. You get the LED turn lamps. These look really nice on the fenders. You really want, I really want these. I don't know, you probably want these too. Um, but then the other one is, let's spin this around, the LED tail lights. Now, this is one that I don't like. I really don't like the design of the LED tail lights, but They've built them both on the Wranglers and the Gladiators to hold the sensors for the blind spot assist. And so they have a little sensor that's forward facing on these that, you know, checks to see if anything is beside the Jeep. But, you know, a couple problems with this is, well, anytime you start adding accessories that can potentially impede the vision of those, 
my adventure act system on my wrangler would sit right in front of that and then i would always have an orange light on my side view mirrors which would be super annoying but on the gladiators these tail lights they just protrude so much both from the side and the rear let's spin this around to a rear shot but they just stick out so much that it's really easy to clip them on an obstacle, whether it's a tree that's too tight, especially with the box of Gladiator being much longer than a Wrangler. I think there's some great aftermarket solutions that you can replace the LED tail lights with that are flush mounted and much less likely to get caught on something, but just not having the uh, side view or blind spot assist in there just means that I can buy a, a cheaper variant and if I do smash them, it is gonna be cheaper to replace them. Dual top group, this time I did not go with any dual top groups. We did order a hard top and we'll get to that option in a second. So I just didn't go with the soft top. I don't think the soft top on the Gladiator looks particularly good, but I don't plan on swapping the tops out. We're gonna have a hard top. We're just gonna leave that on. I didn't order dual doors, half doors or anything like that. The dual door group is really expensive, like five, $6,000. I did order the portable wireless speaker, but uh, you know, this is just nice for a grab and go speaker around camp. Forward facing trail cam, I did order this. Uh, it wasn't available on my Wrangler when I ordered it in 2020. I put an aftermarket in, uh, aftermarket one in from Z Automotive, which has been great. I use it a lot, especially when we're coming over obstacles and I can't see what's in front of me but I also turn it on and record it for an extra shot when we're off-roading. So I like having this trail cam, it's just kind of handy. I did not order Gorilla Glass. Uh, a lot of people ask about Gorilla Glass, what do I think about Gorilla Glass? I have not yet been sold on how much more durable Gorilla Glass is. Uh, Landon over at Epic Adventure Outfitters, he bought Gorilla Glass on his 4xE and on his way home, literally from the dealership, a rock hit and smashed it. So now, You've thrown 250 bucks out the door ordering this. I don't want to have to replace it with Gorilla Glass because it's going to be way more expensive. Now, I didn't bother with any tire upgrades because we're going to be obviously swapping this out. We're going to be putting uh, Nitto tires on here. We're using trail grapplers on the Wrangler and we'll probably use trail grapplers on the JT. Freedom Top. I did order this, uh, the body color Freedom Top modular hardtop. Now, we already have the we're gonna have the hard top on here, but I did go with color matched. So here's a quick look. Now, this isn't the final look, but I really wanted the colored silhouette of the Gladiator, you know, especially making YouTube videos, uh, looks are important. And so I'm gonna have the red matched roof and I want to have the Gladiator all be one color when you look at the box and the cab and just the whole silhouette of the Jeep B1 color. None of these other options to me really seem worth it. Like I don't need a tie down strap or locking lug nuts. We'll deal with all that as we go. <laughs> the plastic door sill guards, we add those. Mesh sun bonnet, I don't know, we don't need that. Don't need a doors off mirror kit. Trailer kit I think is just some light recovery gear. So we kind of skipped over all this. I did not go with a black Mopar grill. I want a red grill. I want the whole Jeep to be red for $495 the body color two piece fender flares. And this goes back to how I wanted my Jeep to look. So I wanted it all to be red. So we're not gonna add any of these graphics. I did add a spray in bed liner. No point for adding a cold air intake. Uh, I honestly don't think cold air intakes are a great idea on Jeeps because it just increases the likelihood of water getting into your intake. I prefer the design that they have from the factory. It's actually really good at preventing water. It keeps the intake really high in the hood and as well as it has a reservoir that if you do suck a little air or water into your intake, it actually can drain out and goes into a, a big box before it comes back up into your intake and through the filter. No tonneau covers or soft tops. Now I did add the steel front bumper. So this is a thousand dollar option. Uh, it doesn't include swapping out the rear bumper. The rear bumper on the Gladiators is already uh, steel. If you're ordering a, a Wrangler, this does include the front and the rear bumper. I really like how clean and factory you can still keep your Jeep looking, um, but you can pull the end caps off and you can make it into a stubby bumper from the factory if you weren't already aware. So that's a big difference between the plastic bumper and the steel bumper is that, well, the steel bumper is made out of steel. You can pull the end caps off and make it into a stubby bumper. 
And then it also has a provision for a winch. So you can add an aftermarket winch plate from someone like Warren, bolt that in, and now you can bolt a winch uh, onto that and then put your bumper back on and have a very factory look on your Jeep with a recessed winch down below the grill so you're not impacting any airflow. And it has a spot on the front that you can add your fair lead to it and have your winch line come right out of the front of the bumper. I did add the hardtop headliner. I think this helps cut down on some of the interior reverbing of your voice when you're speaking. I've been in both Gladiators with and without the headliner. And because the cab is smaller in a Gladiator, it's much more echoey. Now, something I didn't know when I ordered my Wrangler was I was just looking at this purely from a cloth versus leather seat uh, difference. And I didn't know that there's actually other parts that they wrap in leather. And the most important is, well, not most important, but one of the most interesting is the door panels are actually leather and they look a lot nicer when you get the leather seat upgrade. I did want to get all weather floor mats. I am quite happy with the all weather floor mats in my Wrangler um, and, you know, just kind of keeping the grime off of the carpet. But this is apparently a big back order thing right now. So we didn't actually include the all weather floor mats. I did order it with an automatic. I wanted the shift, uh, the shifter location to be factory. I didn't want to, have to change that because we are going to be adding an automatic or keeping an automatic, but we'll be replacing the transmission when we swap the V8 motor out and having an automatic transmission that can handle the, the power and torque from the new motor. But I wanted the vehicle to be all set up for an automatic transmission. And so one final last option, you see this option here, the four to one rock track HD full-time four wheel drive system, $800. I did not order this. I kept the stock uh, four to one transfer case that uh, you don't upgrade to for $800. The difference between the two transfer cases is with the uh, full-time four-wheel drive system, you can have that and set it to like more of an automatic four-wheel drive mode. So it's not, uh, it's not always engaged. And then you can have the same always on four high and then you have four low, obviously. The difference is that this system uses an electronic clutch pack system to disengage and engage the transfer case and four wheel drive as needed versus the standard transfer case, which doesn't have the automatic system is a chain drive and gear system. To me, that seems like a stronger option. That's just my opinion. You guys probably have your opinions on what is stronger, but I want it what I thought. And after talking to other people, the strongest transfer case in there, I didn't want a clutch driven system that's electronically controlled because we're going to be putting a lot of horsepower and a lot of torque through this. So simpler is better and we didn't need to spend $800. There is our new Jeep Gladiator, all firecracker red. So if we go and you're wondering just how much the new Jeep is costing, uh, the MSRP price on this right now is $74,690 Canadian. I mean, we're gonna be putting a V8 swapped big horsepower engine into our Gladiator. Don't miss that series coming up. We'll be starting that in the fall and uh, we've got lots of fun stuff between now and then. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next week.